to see an aggressive game and no fouls, which will be fun to watch. So Texas A&M team won 21 games this season away. Play, but they come into this game red hot and full of confidence. They've won six in the last seven. Get right to the basic team. And he's coming off the 22 pointer, so his level of confidence is very, very high. And both of these teams come out with man to man straight up. Trotter have a little size advantage on Taylor. Shed the skip. This is Crying. Underneath, and kick back out, a little bit shot from the queen. Offensive rebound falling into the awaiting arms of Shed. They'll reset here to Cryer. Now they're going to make sure they're sticking on Cryer because he's like lightning and can shoot it well. Sharp and kick up his fingers. And he gets two seeds for his pass. A couple of things about Sharp. He shot the ball fairly well the other night to come up with 13 points. Good hand. As Radford gets it to Levesque, and they're going to earn a trip to the line. Jimmy, you alluded to it. This is the number one offensive rebounding team in the country. And boy, you won't find two teams that have taken on the personalities of their coach more than these two. Texas A&M and Houston. As well as Levesque, 83% free throw shooter of the line. Texas A&M took care of Nebraska in the opening round. And Houston with an easy first round victory over Longwood. To get us where we are here. See what Houston has done all time in this round of the time. Let's consider all the expectations that they on this team to make it the They turn back Taylor. Washington, who was terrific the other night, earns another trip to the free throw line for the Aggies. And that's another blast to the offensive glass, that time by Washington, just trailing it. You see how they come down the floor. He's going to work his way to the middle of the court, where he's very, very effective. He can go both ways with it. And they come up with another opportunity off the glass. There's a charge to J.D. Francis, his first. So here's Solomon Washington, really good with it, seven points, four points. Oh, you can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Download now to stay up to date on all of the action. It's fair when you look at right now, in less than two minutes of action play, the front line guys for Houston each have one foul, Robinson Francis. It's early, but let's see if they go after that, make, make some hay, and try to go after them on the offensive end. Houston Cougars, 31 wins on the season. Finished the regular season, number two in the AP pair. And Sharp buries another triple. I don't know if he can get too much attention. Obviously, he's not getting enough attention right now on the offensive end. It's a very good ball to his left. He's a left-handed player, so they have to read that scouting report and make sure they're okay with it. Spiro, watch what, what Texas A&M does. Watch along the baseline here, how they bump somebody into the middle of the floor. You see how he's cheating right there? They do that as well as any team in the country. And he fouls right there, but he's there defensively to help out. They plug the middle of the floor. So you look at cross court, make people run a bit. Now that's one of the downsides to point in the middle of the floor. It's a long way to go. And Radford just stays on this play, cleans it up. So here is Roberts at the free throw line. That's Roberts for even more production. He's had a really good season, but with the injuries, Jimmy, that they've had, especially to Joseph Tugler, lost him early part of this month after he had to undergo foot surgery. There's more on the plate with all their other bigs left on their roster. And Roberts himself has been dealing with a shin injury the last couple of weeks. Wins in the 
second is this game. And it's going to explore. You know, if you go along, I would expect Texas A&M to continue to. Yeah, they could shoot the ball from the outside, but I think they'll run in their teeth if they keep driving this Houston team a little bit. Yeah, what a drop by Reddick for two to get that shot off. He just missed an easy one. Uh, see him going weak on the ball. He's going to take his green ball for a lookout. Francis takes a nasty spill of the basketball back to the Cougars. Catch a courtside. Refresh your fandom with a delicious Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try it in the second. I don't know if you want to get out there and try to box somebody out. <laughs> That'll be a hard to know. <laughs> Physicality between those two teams is so all over the hole. It really is. We're going to be playing where we go. Nice pass with the left hand. And again, look at Garcia as he's a specialist on that. Looking for offensive clearance on the ball, just get his hands on it. Love the way if they don't get to it, they tip it out and their guards stay this short of half court. Rafford, it's Taylor, inside. It's contested though, isn't it? I think you keep driving it too. Make Houston defend off the dribble. Or Ray Taylor has been on some kind of a heater. It's about 30 point games in the CC tournament. And sensational in their opening round win over Nebraska. And a short piece is from deep. The shooting numbers for the Aggies. With exactly four minutes gone by here in Memphis. And Buzz Williams put on a break on this possession here. And it comes right first, spins into the double. That's the four as he flicks it up. And he's going to shoot free throws. Kelvin Sampson and his bench can't believe it. Boy, this is high intensity. Everything we expected between the Aggies and Cougars. Here in Memphis. All right, Jimmy, back here in Memphis, early stages. There's a score, 7-7. Seven, seven. There's one guy here in the house who's hoping for a deep run from his beloved Cougars. There's Jim Nance, our buddy and colleague. His son, Jameson, taking it all in here. This was the scene a couple of weeks ago. The Cougars unveiling a banner honoring Jim, his remarkable career, calling 32 Final Fours. Tip of the cap to Jim, just incredible. What a career. What a career. Pretty awesome to see him and Jameson here taking in the sights. And there's the free throw from Radford. Jimmy, what about some thoughts here? What are you seeing so far a couple of minutes into this game? Well, we thought they, was gonna, they were going to play this inside and really muscle one another as best they can. He does that second one. Back and off for a reason, but they keep playing through it. It's, it's just fun to watch this type of game in person, you know, because you really get a feel for the aggressive nature of it and the speed in which they're playing in. Javier Francis. Sits on the bench, picked up his second personal, and Cedric Lott has checked into the game. They first shut the baseline that time. Shed off the dribble, misses, fight for it, Roberts. This is Shed. No good, and the Cougars come up empty. That's usually where they get a bucket on their side, the offensive glass and the kickouts to the perimeter. They're just saying, Taylor and Rockford are combined one for six, Jimmy, their top two scorers. See what the call is here with Obasa keep forcing the issue. to be sharp, watch it almost give him a little bear hug here at one point. There's one, there's two. He just keeps reaching and grabbing because he knew he was out of position to begin with. One thing Calvin Sampson touched on about this Texas a and team is that the one thing they, they, they know what they want to do is how they play offensively but not play. As Radford is cash money with that mid-range J. Boy, oh, his back-to-back -back games are really starting to stack up in terms of his performance with his 20 in the opener. It helps to the baseline side. You see where there's there? It's a tough catch for yep. Shed. Player for me. That's Very good from right side to left side. And back down to the shooter on the side. And it looks like Garcia. Official 
just say jump ball and the possession arrow is going to give it to Houston. Well, just a couple of bodies on the floor, that trip. Those Williams loving it. Well, let's see the reaction defensively. Here they keep right in front of the dribbler. You know, the, one of the things, too, Spiro, that Houston does so well is the bigs. Um, almost a foul there. I don't know if he touched them coming down on the top. The ball may have saved him from committing a foul just then. But the bigs for Houston are very quick with their lateral motion, so we'll see them stop and get out front and defer and push the dribblers away. So, so Houston, interestingly, now eight of their nine shot attempts have been three pointers. Basic, he's going to reset Taylor. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that too. Shed. Basic. Prior is there. He played a swat ball all of a sudden. The way they're going after it. The athleticism oh, between goodness. these two teams is off the charts. Such smart play, too. You can't get a hand, two hands on it to grip it, grab it, take a swat, swipe at it. <laughs> dribble drive from Coleman, who's bumped on the dribble. Watch that smack by Garcia. Now, like, same thing. Shed does the same thing. Efforts all over the place. Three and four efforts just then. Both sides. Foul charge to Cedric Black. It is his first and 15 foul against the Cougars. Here comes Black. And he lays it up again. Well, you've got to remember that he's a lefty. I know that's simple, but Gunn came out first time on the floor. And let him go right by him with the left hand. Force him to the right, even though. He had right there as one of the best spins from the right to left. I'm sure we'll see that at some point. Roberts put a pretty drop step and he goes glass. Roberts! Have to mix it up a little bit. Nice job by Houston get the ball away from the perimeter as you touched on a moment ago. Not hitting their outside shots. Touch the waters down deep with your boots. Roberts, the red shirt senior. From the same time as the conversion of the exact. He's running down as Houston keeps him off the offensive glass. And he's going to just check out the one. This is Shed. Nice delay by Shed also. Even though Texas a and got back in a hurry, his delay out front didn't want to push it in a fast, fast break transition play, but that was just as good in the delayed break by himself. Jamal Shed, the player of the year in the Big 12. Not to mention the defensive player of the year in what was a brilliant season. That's probably a good foul because Coleman would have just finished that off for an easy bucket. But watch Cranford just goes right by Dunn. He gave he gives him the shield to go to the left, and that's he is a lefty, so it'll make that happen. Watch this delay. And push it right up with that left hand. Smart play by Shev, but that's what he does, make smart plays. Jim, interesting. Texas a and star, Ray Taylor, who came in on some kind of a heater. Yep. Is 0 for 5 so far, and he has yet to score a point. So if you're Buzz Williams, you have to be at least partly encouraged that this game was not a score. Yeah, and against uh, for 25 points that first round, but more importantly, the way he was shooting the basketball, he was 7 to 10 for the three point line. He's been a little bit feast of famine at times, but yeah, he has come in red hot. 25 points on average over the previous five, including those back-to-back 30-point -back games in the SEC tournament. Yeah, Matchup size advantage with Dunn. Shed the driving kick. Wilson practice is sharp. Back to Shed, the fake. Two to shoot. Wilson will let it rip. And he missed. Put a good execution though by Houston. They used that clock, but not much to a four shot. Garcia on the box. Audacity swinging. I just like the look by Garcia just on the back of the He didn't really look to go with it because I know he knew that there was a defender behind him that just kicks it to the perimeter. Audacity shooting it at a plus 50 percent clip. In his last seven starts, and he's picked up where he's left off. Shed going high on glass. And 
Texas A&M yeah. defense just that, that time was late in the initial setup and even later on the drive to try to stop Jed. So Dennison comes and spins back. Wilson, he's going to take it. Little bit of a fight hard and shot, please. Have to continue to read Texas A&M's defense. Look at you. Let's go, Kevin. Go, Tim. Boy, that was all the shit. <laughs> Dazzling with that handle. Talk about shutting defenders up. Trying to get him. Watch him break somebody down here. Chris and Cross. And beautifully done. Guards are just really stacking it up right now. Texas A&M guys shoot the ball fairly well. Seconds ago, John Rothstein with Kelvin Sampson. All right, Kelvin, how do you clean up the defensive glass? Um, keep JBF France on the floor would help. Him getting in two fouls. Um, um, it's just devastating for us because we just don't have another sub behind him. So we either let him play with two or, or go small. Right now we're going small, but we, or I'm sure we're going to have to bring him back. All right, thanks. Talk to you in a bit. Okay. All right, John, what a juggernaut of a program Kelvin Sampson has built. 31 wins this year, Jimmy, despite the fact that he has lost four different starters at various points of the season. You mentioned some of the thinness that they have with their front court. Huge loss of Joseph Tucker. Series of fakes, and it comes up with abuse. And right for the guy who likes to shoot that shot coming through with the Kelvin Sampson's comment on whether he puts the big in Francis with two fouls. I think you'll see the scoreboard indicate that. If they go, you know, if they get down to eight or ten, he might go to but I think he'll want to save him for the second half. And Francis has been on the bench for the last five minutes of game action. This is Wilson. They leave him on the Shot for the Cougars. Kid starts it. Short continues it. And then they finish it off with a beautiful Wilson jumper. Wilson to Texas. Texas ball. Basic he misses in a crowd. At this end, meantime, Houston started 2 of 10 shooting. They've hit six of their last seven. As Obasic, he is called for the bump. Look at the first pass there. Out and then the quick release. Very unselfish play. To get you three on the board in a hurry. Jimmy, we have yet to see Ramon Walker in for Houston tonight. Remember, they got Walker back from that knee injury. They just returned. First time they've had him since late February. The lateral meniscus tear. Wade Taylor has checked back in for Buzz Williams meantime as we cross the midway point of his first half. Yeah, off of the break that could give him some lift off the, off the uh, boards also. Shot clock down to seven. Shed guarded by Washington. Near side flyer. Baseline shot. No, but he's bumped. OJ Cryer, Texas kid, Baylor transfer. We'll head to the free throw line as we take a little peek at our tournament summary. Duke, upside victory over James Madison, and they now wait the winner of this one here between Houston and Texas A&M. What a win earlier here in Memphis by Clemson. Here's Kelvin's granddaughter, Maisie Jade. Mm. Apple of his eye, as he told us this year. And she was hoping that uh, the Empire's run with this team will continue just a few more days. Kelvin's all, all business when it comes to basketball, but when he started talking about the grandkids, See the run by Houston. Five ties, nine lead changes. You're expected to stop your guy. A race by Cryer. Shot clock didn't reset. Five. Taylor. Look out. Look out. Bodies all over the place. Looks like everyone's okay. Wade Taylor now is 0 for 6. Let's get the call here. I'm just going to be real honest with you on this score. I don't know what happened to the track. Of it. It's going to be one and one. His body's bumping. And watch this now. 
What did they get on that? Boy, look at that. Right. was bumped into Pryor. What a tough play by Houston. But again, the offensive rebounding prowess of AM is really what's keeping them here to within four points. Uh, 13 rebounds and seven of them so far in the last one. Boy, the effort misses on the front end. So Texas A&M, if you just do it, a 6 of 21 from the field, they're 1 of 6 from 3. Look at Roberts out there, Skira, right at the top of the key area now. He is struggling a bit. Hey, 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 hey. might be looking over to, he looked over the bump for a second. So it's about that shin injury. Shed's going to fire. Back to the window, long rebound, Pryor, elevates, and he has space Yeah, Rob, Rob, they're going to have to make a substitution for Roberts. He started to drive down right. I would think they'd have to. Yeah, they'll get somebody up off the bench. Javier Francis with his two personals jobs over to the table. Or well right on him if you have him. Houston has scored seven straight. This is Washington down to the box. Tough pass for Garcia. Ted to shoot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Garcia is fun to watch too. On the offensive glass has a little tricky flip back to a cut and pass with the delivery. There is a slickness and a cleverness to that kick by C.S. Lee. He ain't in front of the to get shed to go along the baseline. Damn shot for Houston! Shoot is picking it apart because he knows they're trying to fade him into going to the baseline, but he's smart enough not to go all the way. Comes right foot back to Sean and it back to Missed! And Washington hitting the glass. But Buzz Williams looking for some answers. They're down seven with 7.32 left. Here's and a day to Dallas on the line here in Memphis. Emmanuel Sharp hot here at the start. Seconds ago, John Rutstein and Buzz Williams. Buzz, how did they build the lead in those last couple minutes? We're just not physical enough. Uh, we're not guarding the ball well enough. They're getting us in rotation. Too often times they're getting an offensive rebound. We've got to be more physical, take up the cushion, try to keep the ball on the side. All right, thanks. Talking a bit. Buzz Williams has this Aggies team in the tournament. Another look at the potential injury. Roberts came up hobbled a little bit. We've been talking about that shin injury as they look at him now. Clearly still bothering him, Jimmy, on that bench. They're trying to do their best to numb it a little bit. But look like some cross spray going on it. And so Washington at the free throw line. And the Aggies now 5 of 10 at the strike. John, what do you have? All right, well, Spiro, J1 Roberts re-aggravated that shin injury that hurt him last week in the Big 12 tournament. Got some treatment, but he should be fine to come back, Spiro. All right, so good news. As Wilson clears, what's the call here? It's going to be against Texas A&M. As they're going to get Radford underneath. Yeah, Buzz just said not playing aggressive enough. You have a comment on that, Spear? <laughs> this looks pretty aggressive to me. He's on a free throw. Yeah, push as he spun around. Right by him initially, but Washington really put the Jets on. Oh, and slicing through the teeth of the defense. Oh, look at this. They're still putting Washington right here on Shea to challenge him. Let's see how he plays. He's calling. And at six seconds, Shea a little quicker. Right he played for Buzz Williams of Virginia Tech. Great basket for the end. He's driving his pass stolen. It's Radford. He lays it up and in. He is so good at getting that ball to the floor, but he's better at delaying his shot after the bodies go flying by him. Right there, Texas A&M wants to do that to split the court. Once you get the ball on one side, they want to keep it on that side as best they can. This is shot. Tracks it down. Good decision by Taylor here. The three most 
players back, so a good decision to wait it out and pull it back. The Aggies are shooting 35% and miraculously it's a three-point game. Yeah, it was a good decision too, Spiro, because of where they are on the scoreboard. They're making a little run right now, so make sure you get a good shot. Bradford is kind of alive. He's got a team right 10 points. Here he comes back to shoot his pass. Deflected. Nice interior defense. And it's the Francis. They read the spin. Yeah, nice work. Wilson up the deflection. Kick sharp left open. Here's Cash Money in this opening round. Sharp has a dozen. That's his fourth triple of the half. 36% from the three-point line on the year. When they know that he's hot, they find him. When he has had big scoring games, this has been a different Houston team. Time out on the floor. Cougars by six. As we take a little peek at our AT&T connected cam. Spiro, watch the way he hangs in the air, up there, delays, and then finishes that off. And then the answer from the Houston side, though, watch the puck over here on this side of the floor, and the diagonal pass comes his way. And Sharp, I don't want to say it, might be a sharp shooter, huh? I don't want any elbows from you right now. <laughs> we'll let that one slide. All right, thanks. As it, as well, he's looking for some answers here. is on the floor now for the Aggies. Pepper is 6 and 3 is front of his shots at 3. The basket, he has to hurry. 2 to shoot. Fires low. Another offensive rebound. Garcia relentless on the glass. Garcia has a block and he's heading to the line. Garcia just making it happen though. On the offensive glass, making the right pass to trigger some things and some action. Really giving good, good minutes off the bench. Look at him going after the ball. This time he knows he can grab it. What does he do? He three feeds it to the middle of the floor, and they feed it right back. And this is some finish underneath to get to the right side of the hoop. Good little dribble drive there in the middle of the court by Hefner. So Garcia, the senior, born in the Dominican Republic, entering the tournament. He was tied with Zach Eadie for the most offensive rebounds in the country. Just an absolute master on the glass. Yep. Great defensive player, too. See what Sharp has done in the struggles of the rest of the team. With Houston holding a three-point lead. As we move past the five-minute mark. Whistle here against Solomon Washington. She liked that job. <laughs> Shed back to Cryer. Finds the races. Like it's short, you get a better look at that now. We're lucky to leave him alone like that. That's the wrong guy. He shoots at just a touch of the 40% on the year. Boy, can this kid Taylor get going? He stumbles. Somehow gets it to Coleman and then a leeching foul. Boy, it looked like a broken play. Taylor sticks with it. And two free throws coming up here for the Aggies. Some people might be saying, why isn't this called a travel if he falls down with the ball? But watch, he doesn't He doesn't have the ball as he falls. He's still in a dribbling motion, so he keeps that alive and reacts and makes a better play out of something that was really broken, like you said, Spiro. Boy, if anyone told Buzz Williams before this game, Wade Taylor would be scoreless at the 433 mark in the first half, four of six. And it would be a one possession game. I'm not sure he would have believed it. Better start making the free throws too if you're Texas A&M. Look at this 0 for 6. And 0 for 6 from the three point strike after the game he put up. Can overstate how hot Wade Taylor has been over the last couple of weeks. But you're right, like the free throw shooting becoming a problem. Yep. As A&M now 7 of 14 at the line. And somehow, this is a two point game. Just incredible. And it becomes magnified when you look at Houston only three for four. So they've had ten, uh, ten more attempts than Houston from the free throw line here. The two teams that faced off in the middle part of December on a neutral court in Houston, a game won by the Cougars. This is Cryer, quarter pocket three and a loose ball foul against Houston. I think it might be done right there. No, who'd they get on this one? Well, it's done in. Number five on that side, Francis, I guess. But both of them were over there. 
Let's see who they get here. Yes, you're right. I believe it is going to be Francis, and that's going to be his third personal. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Double bonus for the Aggies, so two free throws here for Tyrese Radford. One thing that Kelvin Sampson told us, we just can't afford to get our bigs in foul trouble. Uh, Cedric Black is going to have to be summoned here by Sampson. You mentioned the injuries that they've had. Losing Tugler, foot surgery, such a huge piece of Kelvin's front court. I almost feel like Kelvin's arguing that it might have been Dunn who fouled just then. So it will be Garcia, the free throw shooter. 4.15 left. Does it look like Kelvin's going to win that argument? Yeah. Garcia, a 71% free throw shooter. SEC all defensive team led the conference in rebounding. And he has played a huge role in his first half. And I think with Francis, watch for his right arm here. Yeah, I guess he does. You know, both of them, Francis actually pushed before Doug did, so they, they made the right call just then because he was the first call. We are tied in Memphis. Francis to the bench, picks up his third. Here's Gunn. Oh, Temple transfer. And he gets it up on baseline. Initially didn't fit in early on in the season, but starting to work his way back. That's a key working on the bleeding on the front. So a good time for Texas a and to continue to pound in this ball towards the basket. Look at serving as a starter just over two weeks ago. What a decision that's turned out to be for Buzz Williams. Here's Dunhill. Short. He's kept alive. It's Wilson. Butler tiptoes in. Wilson looking for some daylight. This is Short. And it's done. But Taylor is there on the team for the Aggies. That was nice look. Put it down inside. Garcia's gonna shoot. What vision by Taylor. And what a decision by Taylor, too. There's two parts to that really still. Number one is recognizing that nothing's gonna happen with him one on three. And then pulling it back just a touch. And look at that perfect strike. As we take a little look at our game summary, 315 left before halftime. Jimmy, we expected this one to be highly intense. And maybe not the prettiest of games, but it's it's played out like we were we were told it might play out. Both coaches emphasizing how aggressive they play. What a chess match between two of the best in the coaching game, Kelvin Sampson. One of the all-time careers in the history of the sport, Buzz Williams, the respect level between these two men. One thing Kelvin told us about Buzz, he said, Buzz has it. I'm not sure what it is, but he's got it. Just a tremendous track record of success everywhere Buzz has been in his career. And it's really helped out on the pick and roll, but not going to run that many of them used in the ball. Quiet, that is obvious as shit, knifing in a leaner touch shot. You're not kidding, because getting it up off the glass in particular from that angle, you know, most guys are trying to throw the floater right over the rim, but his touch is so good, he backs it in. Seven times, 11 lead changes, and boy, the Aggies parade to the free throw line continues. These will be their 19th and 20th free throws of the half. As LJ Cryer is whistled for a second, reminder to keep it here, at and the half scores and highlights coming up. We'll get you around the NCAA tournament. All the news and notes you need, it's all to come on at and at the half. So here's Manny Obasaki. Imagine his insertion into the starting lineup. Last seven plus games, he's averaged nearly 17 points for Buzz Williams, including that 22 point gem in the opener on Friday. And still, I'm going down a stat sheet too. You look at the start, you know, the people on the Houston team. 
You know, there's one, two, three guys, four guys with two fouls or more, including Francis's three, so fouls are really mounting up. Here comes Shelton, and he takes contact! Just amazing how quick he is, and everybody knows he's a right-handed player, and good players understand how to get to their spots, and watch him just wiggle his way in, gets hit, and keeps his concentration to finish it off. Watch after he gets hit, he starts to fall out of bounds right there towards the right, and to the just in a hurry with the string to finish it off. Now, Calvin Sampson is not a guy who throws out platitudes and compliments. This is one of his all-time favorite players right here, Jamal Shedd. As gritty and as talented a player as we have in the country. Can he be the player that takes his program to the college basketball mountain top? I got a little zone look for you, Stick right there, too. I don't see that too often with that. Nice back to the middle. Underneath. Oh, it gets into Gets into trouble. It's a two-point game as we hit the two-minute mark. Kane Lucas. Houston usually plays that man to man all the time. Shell. He's just too good. Well, he's starting to end this game right now with the foul troubles that his teammates have. Why not take it over? Run a point spot to take from the floor. Second Cougar in double figures. I'm not sure the zone's working that well, Spiro. Foul problems will cause you to go into the zone. But boy, if you've not played it a, a, a lot and practice it often, you're going to have trouble with your assignments. I'm going to try to get this ball in Shed's hand. Good ball movement by the Cougars. This is Dan. Chases into the paint and he puts it down. Nice pace for this game right now for both sides. Back to the match of man in the hole. The handler is mauled. A lot of contact. Shed argues and pleads his case. Two free throws coming up and a chance for Taylor to finally get his first points. Yeah, look at the crossover and then the step across. Beautifully executed and watch this one, baby. And Rasekin finishing it off. So Shed, who's still pleading his case, picks up his second personal. And here's Wade Taylor now at the free throw line. 94% of the season and he misses. Still, just watch when he shoots the free throw here, how much rotation he gets on the basketball. Basically gets as much rotation on the ball as just about anybody I've seen in a while. And usually, when you have that rotation, that shot that he just put up generally sits on the rim. Man, it's, it's perfect. Hard to believe Taylor gets his first point of the night at the 103 mark of the first half. And though he's very streaky. Kevin Sampson knows that too. Next whistle against the Aggies puts Houston in the one and one. Ten of the time. Harder defending shit. Out to Dunn. Strikes in. They bring it all the way up to get smart. Shot clock resets to 20. Shad sizes up Carter on the take, and that's going to put him at the free throw line. Boy, this has been all Shad over the last two minutes and change, as he's got a chance to put them in front by five. His parents, Lisa and Elvin, how proud must they be of their boy? What a nice t-shirt there, taking it to the Shad. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some clever t-shirts. But you know what, though, Spiro, from the scouting report standpoint, where has he been doing all his damage when he's driving on the right side of the floor? I know he could go left. I know he's a fabulous player, but take a little of the edge off by forcing him to use his left hand a little more. Shad hits on the front end. One of the things Kelvin told us, he's credited his parents. Everyone talks about how talented this kid is. He's also a star in the classroom, a GPA over 3.8. He said his parents give them all the credit. You see us put the cleaners now in front by five, 25.6 left before the intermission. With the winner here moving on to Dallas.
and to take on Duke. That is zone look. Let's see if he gets one of the small wings to flash to the middle of the floor. It's on Hartman. It's like a, a matchup, but they're now looking at a 1-1-3. One, one, He's on the double bonus. Here he comes. A spin. Houston desperately protecting the defensive glass. Wade Taylor, hard to believe, just one point, 0 for 6, was AM star in that first half. John standing by with Kelvin Sampson. Kelvin, how do you have a lead with all the foul trouble up front? Well, you don't have to be very smart to figure out what our problem is. I mean, we got everybody on our team is in foul trouble. But sometimes you just got to figure it out. We're, we're, we've got band-aids and uh, ace bandages and splints and all that stuff. To, you know, we're just throwing guys out there. I mean, we got a guy playing center, never played basketball. He's only 15 years old, but we'll figure it out. But your defense has done a great job on Wade Taylor in the first half. How? Well, they're going to uh, the, the two left-handers. They're shooting all the balls. All right, have a good rest of that. Spiro. All right, John, so Calvin Sampson and the Cougars in a dog fight here in Memphis. They're up five. We'll get you to AT&T in the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. One thing Lisa really wants, she wants to see the first half stats. <laughs> presented by Marriott Bonvoy. There you go. <laughs> Lisa built these stats for us, some of her handiwork. Five-point nice. lead for Houston. As we sit in for the final 20 minutes, as we welcome you back, Portside Spiro, Adidas, Jim Spinarco. We'll hear from John Rothstein in just a couple of seconds. First half thoughts, and what are we looking for here? First couple of minutes of the second half. I guess the only way I can explain this is in the old days when we used to play five on five, you would call your own fouls in the, in the playground. I'm glad they're not doing this right now, Spiro, because there are plenty to go around in that first half. But it'll be interesting to see. Foul trouble will play a factor most likely when it comes to Houston's side of the ball right now. Look at that number, 29 combined field goals for just three turnovers in the first half. With a flip, <laughs> Redford. <laughs> Story of this game has been an offensive rebound lead by Buzz Williams, but that's something we've seen from this bunch all year. Number one offensive rebounding team in the country. They have 11 now, and they average 17, so they're near in that average. Houston's got to do a much better job to keep them away from it. LJ Pryor, the fellow Giants player gets the Cougars on the board. And he's one of the guys who just has to get on track. He's two for seven at the half. You would think they'd run and call his number a few times. It comes a massive team with a spin, fight for it. And Pryor on the take for Houston. Yeah, those spin shots were the ones that were going down in their first game against the Bears. No way, no way, no way! Oh my God! This is so nice touch by the Yankees. So you look at the action on the offensive glass and watch this little flip shot as he falls off his pace. Nice finish though. Houston Cougars trying to get back to the Sweet 16. But it will be a fourth straight year, including their run to the Final four a couple of years ago. Robert Brook and Sharp now it's kept alive by Roberts, but here comes Ophasic Key with a contact. No basket. Offensive foul. Well, the trick to this play by Shed is let's see if he moves it off. Because if you move, it's going to get called the other way. But watch, he plants and he stands still. So even though Ophasic. Obasaki comes over, but he, he runs him over, even though he's sliding by. That's Jamal Shedd, Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12 this season. Let's check in with John. Well, Spear, I just talked to Buzz Williams, and he told me his biggest point of emphasis in the locker room was Texas A&M gave up too many long offensive rebounds in the first half that generated extra possessions for Houston. Why the Cougars have the lead, Spear? But John, that's a huge call. Obasaki's very personal, so he has to sit. Less than 90 seconds into the season now. Here's Cryer. Looking for some dead legs. Shed's gonna launch. Nice! Rebound control by Jace Carter, the junior. And back from the Aggies. Here comes Radford, one of our stars. Offensive rebound, and they're gonna get Roberts on a reach in. 
Jimmy, they just will not stop coming on the offensive glass. You know, Spiro, once in a while, I think, and not all the time. Well, it just comes up short, walking off the line. I think when they get in trouble in the lane, they flip that ball up just to put it on the glass so somebody can go try and get it. Well, these missed free throws start to become a big part of the story. They come up empty again. The Aggies are now 11 of 24 at the free throw line. And Jimmy, a critical juncture here with Obasaki to the bench. Keep in mind, Wade Taylor, the number one scorer, is 0 for 7. He's got one point if you just join us. Fire! Favorite sends. Open that. That's going to be a good one. foul. It's Sharp drawing the contact. Yep. Number 13, Washington with the arm extension. <laughs> Got to be careful now if you're Texas AM. And so here's that little push. And then watch. Here's the other part of it. A right arm shiver. Fire, you knew they were going to try to run a couple of sets for him. Gets that right foot back and great rotation on the basketball. And Houston in control right now. Solomon Washington picks up his third personal. So he has to sit alongside of Basaki. Danger zone here. If you're looking, Shed's been broken up. Good hands in traffic just then. Anderson Garcia comes up with it. Here comes Taylor. He's been to get him to get going. Star has his first basket of the night. You see that play out front two. Where Shed tried to go for a steal. And Taylor just blew right by him as they shift back into a zone right now. Taylor, the junior from Dallas. Here's Trier. Jesus a splash! A zone breakdown because he got the ball and Trier dribbled right out of it. Next thing you know, he's got a wide open shot. Left the big 12 and was 13th nationally in May threes this season. He scored their last eight. This is a deep three. Deep shot for the Aggies. He gave a double quickie scoring so he can light it up on occasion. That was a picture perfect dropper. Looks like a two three look. And now it's back to it like a matchup. With the physical defense right in his chest, he never flinched. Nick put up 10 points in a hurry, too. How it does? Making good decisions. Let's see if Taylor can get streaky. Yeah. <laughs> this kid has had some prodigious scoring lines. Can he get going for the Aggies? Five-point game as we cross the 16-minute mark. He's not going to stop playing because he's two for nine from the floor. Dunn into the corner, shot off the floor. That's great. He shot it off the deflection, and it's last touched by AM. You get one out in the front, and you know you can go by people. Watch the speed. Fake to the left, and he's got a big guy down there, Coleman, kind of opening up some space for him. And here's the pull-up. May get him on track as we progress in this game. Told you about the recent history between these two teams. They met on a neutral floor in Houston on December the 16th. It was a crazy game. Houston blowing a 21-point lead in the second half of that game. Radford did not play for the Aggies. That was the game where Arsenal went down with that devastating Achilles injury. Kelvin told us about the, the tears at halftime. It's such a huge emotional piece for this Houston team. Ray Taylor was incredible in the second half, and we may, we may need to have a similar run. Jimmy, if they're going to win this one tonight, we get a whistle here. And they shed a little bit late to get to his feet. Well, that's the last guy that can afford to lose for even a minute. Shed was trying to read this defense. And to be honest with the Spiro, I was too. It looked like it was going to initially be man to man, then it folded into the middle of the floor as if it was his own. And he just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep dribbling the ball until they figure out what they're supposed to be doing defensively. His parents. 
taking on Lisa Martin. This is Cryer. Oh, Not to run with the pinball, and Radford squeezes a bunch of people getting their hands on that ball. Boy, Radford, by the way, has a double-double. He's had a little bit of a nice pass, and that is only the fourth Aggies turnover tonight. And Houston's only had, has three skills, so you look at that and say, wow. The way this game has been going up and down, it's amazing. The bad news for Buzz is that three of them have come yeah. in less than five minutes since halftime. Well, the intensity between these two coaches just off the charts. Buzz Williams, Calvin Sampson. What a matchup, what a chess match here in Memphis. Runner again advances to Dallas, or they will take on Duke. There's a string attached to them. That was a perfect example of Shed breaking somebody down off the dribble. And Pryor just reading his smile. Hey, Boy, Sandler, right into the teeth of the defense, not out of bounds. And the officials say it'll stay right here. Yeah, if you take a look at Shed, watch this. He does that, and the other guy here goes that way. And they match up one another as if they're tied to a string. And one goes, the other follows. Here's Radford. Good, inside. It gets it back. That was a good recovery. Taylor. Look at Garcia. Unbelievable. That kick. The relentlessness on the glass continues. Taylor slithers in and he misses. Yeah, out of control that last shot. Every time they're out of control, it just makes it that much more difficult for them because they have to come up with a good stop here defensively. So Wade Taylor now, 2 of 12 in the field. Watch him out there. He goes by him. That's not the problem. Now he just has to find out who's open and let Roberts deliver. LJ Cryer, Jimmy, starting to take the game over for the Cougars. So I like the way that they involved him more importantly because in the first half he was two for seven, 0 for five from three. But you know he's he's a, a winner. He's a shooter. He's a gamer. But they had to do something to try to get him involved. So 10 of his 16 points have come since. He's taken away by Cryer. He's doing it in both ends. And he'll score. I think it's like with Texas A&M. Don't put the ball in the baskets. Once you get a little bit of a, a break and you get an advantage, stop with the foot passes and just go and deliver. Get to the line again. Buzz Williams reinserting Manny Obasiki into the game. He can't waste any more time here as he throws in three. With a pass sharp, right to the same play. That was Garcia again, getting a hand in the middle of it. So here's Obasiki, four of ten shooting. Pass on the dribble, here he comes to the left. So smart. Get it into the middle of the floor. Stop the big try to make extra passes if you have a shot. Get it and put it in the hoop. 17 starts as a freshman two years ago. Last year he had that broken bone in his hand. Really put a wrench in his season. But boy, as he put it together on the biggest stage. Francis on a catch in the stands.
Shed making it happen. Watch the left side. Ball bounces. Pretty neat for a six foot one guy to finish it off like that. Whoa. Oh. Two schools separated by about 100 miles doing battle on the biggest stage. Which of these two will be moving on to Dallas? Jamal Shedd has been lethal down the stretch. Let them hear about it here in Memphis. Here's Jim Jamison looking on. He's kind of moving up on the edge of the seat a little bit, isn't he? Before he was sitting back a little bit more. And this Cougars defense. No unit more stingy or stingier in the country. And they hold on here as they protect this nine point lead. It comes Rafford. Short Play. Instead of trying to catch the ball with two hands, he just bounces it down and dribbles it. Let's go to perfect velocity. Right here we'll take on Duke. As we come up on the 11-minute mark in regulation, set the kick a little bit too much velocity on that pass. So a couple of successive turnovers by the Cougars. Watch the effort. Watch straight down. That's a, that's just a. A thinking man's play right there to get that done. Obasiki, they send Francis over on a double team. And Obasiki now is going to reset. And this caller will need to find a shot or two here. See if he can get on track two again. Obasiki comes it up. Fight for it. And it's taken by Roberts. I think Kevin Sampson with the lefties that he referred to, they, they told these guys. They'll go wider initially, and then they'll swing back to the middle with their left hands. They followed it up two times now. Jamal Shed, the orchestrator. Nine seconds to shoot. Taylor gets that track a little bit. It was picking him up. Taylor taking some contact. They're not going to count the field goal. Contact before the gather, say the officials. It's on Cryer. That's going to be his third personal. He gets on track with the crossover. This is close. It's a good call. It's on the floor right there before he gets into the shot. And, shot. and another whistle here. This will be the third team foul as they get sharp here. That's his third personal. By the way, we touched on it the other night. Isaiah Pryor, Marquette Baylor, National Championship team as a freshman back in 21. He's trying to do what no player has ever done in the history of the sport. Win it with two different scores. That is a massive three for Washington and A&M. Especially when you think that he only shoots 27% from the three-point strike on the season. So Houston, I think, kind of forced the action into his hand and he delivered. The sophomore from New Orleans, and just like that, it's a six-point game. He keeps switching everything out. Touch his hand and touch his hand. And on the defense, the ball field hand. So he moved past the midway point in the second half. Look at the tail. Let him out. Taylor, cross over. A little bit too much. Look at Shed. Yes, he has some hops a lot. He saw it on the double. That was a terrific rebound. Look at the foul trouble. That's a big story here down the stretch of this game. Ray Taylor, by the way, is now one for seven from three. Roberts turns the corner. Leans in. And he goes on this. For a guy at 235 pounds here, number one, he's quick. Number two, he gets off the floor, but that's a soft shot for a guy in the first pass. Size. They're the foul. Bradford is bent at the rim. And if this is on Francis, and it is, it's going to be his front personal. Watch the way he operates. Here he comes. Little blast of the hoop and a nice touch for the lefty. Jim, if you buzz Williams, just got to tell you guys to keep attacking the rim. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Francis picks up his fourth, which still 8.45 left in regulation. Yes, 
Oscar, I, I think you're right on that. I think you keep. I think you get the ball in Taylor's hands, right? And let him do something with it outside. I don't think at 2 for 13 at this point in today's game, he's got to worry about 2 for 13. If that plus Williams are telling him, you keep shooting, we'll find a way for that ball to go in. Tyrese running for the graduate senior who played for Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech. Buzz is nicknamed in boots. He's tough as leather. He's had an incredible run during this month. And his team has needed him most. A little isolation now with Garcia out front. Sensational play. And it wasn't by much. He just barely, much, just barely grazed the line. Watch when he comes over here with his right foot. No. His left foot. Boy, Jimmy, what do you think? Hey, hey. I was kind of leaning forward. I thought he hit the line. But that was as close. It didn't look like it. As close as it gets. Tough little break for the Aggies. They walk to the races if you just catch them. Six point game. Pryor's going to beat the high post. Roberts attacks. Oh, what a shot! Now they forced the run into a double team. And you're right, he just went right over the double team with that soft bank again. Jawan Roberts, the red shirt senior, hobbled, playing with that shin injury. He comes right foot on the attack. And the relentless driving of AM continues. Fox Roberts go to work. They run him to a double team right here, and he still reacts and goes right over Garcia to finish it off. But he may very well have picked up the score. Let's get our game summary here with 7.51 left. Eight point lead for the Cougars. See the shooting numbers. AM just miraculously staying within striking distance. They've done it on the offensive glass. And now Tyrese Rats with the free throw line to try to cut into this Houston lead. He's two for five tonight. Yeah, interesting with the turnovers in this game. There are only three combined in the first half, and now up to 15, so there's 12 in the second half. So. A little sloppy to play with the passes, but the defense is kind of sliding all over the place and intercepting the flat. I still think the next time down, one or two times down the floor, you may want to call Taylor's name for Texas A&M and see if he can bring us up. We're going to leave him active. This is Cryer, elevates the shot for Houston. I'm not sure I really agree with that double team on Shelby. He hasn't made many mistakes, and he knows exactly where his teammate's going to be in Cryer. Little lofty pass again to get him a good stride. Right, Radford, they're going to get an offensive foul. Boy, Sharp Jimmy has made some big plays at this end of the floor with his defense. Yeah, he's just stick. Watch him just hold his ground right here. He knows he's trying to get, get him to back him in. And that elbow lifts a little bit. And watch the double team here and that little float pass. And they're leaving the wrong guy, in my opinion, in Fryer, who's Shot it really well all season long. 39 for second three. I don't think he's the guy you want to lead. It's a good thing, Jimmy. You watch this Houston team play, and you're, you're mesmerized by some of the offensive ability and the talent, but all of these offensive guys play defense. Oh, yeah. And that's a must for Calvin Sampson. Pryor, Sharp, as we get a whistle blown here against the Aggies. Reminder, the Sweet 16 begins Thursday with the Nissan NCAA tip-off on TBS at 6.30 Eastern, followed by double headers on both CBS and TBS. Now these two teams will be moving on to Dallas, where they will take on the Duke Blue Devils. Duke the winner earlier tonight against James Madison. So strong with their defense, they need something here. But this is going to be a reaching foul against Radford. And that's one where you go around his back and, and watch how he tries to reach around his back. This isn't going to cut him because there's just too much room to carry yourself around him to get a hand on it. Not a good decision. And now they have no more fouls to give. Number six on Texas A&M. 
will come up on the seven minute mark. You have to have Taylor touching the ball, Spiro. Force him to either shoot the ball, long range, get him to do something with the ball in the middle of the floor, driving, or pass the ball. And here he comes, he's double teamed right here. A slip cut, what does he do? He finds him and gets him to the free throw line. Now you have to make the free throws, because this has not been the strong point of Texas A&M tonight. 15 of 18 before that, now 16 of 29. And just think of how good this AM team has been over the last couple of weeks. The upset over the two seed in the SEC tournament, Kentucky in the quarters. And then really big guard after they blew that big lead in the semis. All of that had left in the tank here down the stretch. Looks like some moisture in the ball as uh, Shed gets the attention of the officials. I'm not sure I've seen that before. <laughs> take it out over here on the sideline. And four to get it over. Two ten seconds. Official saying that all ten seconds to get it over here. to a tie-up, but it was a, a fall down with possession, which is a walk. So here you see the rebound come off. Get possession, two hands on the ball. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Catches it and falls down with it. So they put 20 on the shot clock. Wade Taylor, the inbounder. Here comes Radford looking for any kind of game. Look at the defense by Shaw. Washington, on target. Last touch by Radford. I would almost say that the best hey, part of Kelvin Sampson's defense is the, watch, the, watch the way they react here. Get out in position, get out of position again, and you're stopping people from going by it. That's probably the stamp that I would put on Kelvin Sampson's defense. And you know what, Spear? The big guys do that also, just not the perimeter players. Kelvin Sampson refers to the holy trinity of basketball. Defense, rebounding, and taking care of the ball. As we get an offensive foul here, it's on Sharp. Well, it looked like Washington just kind of ran into Sharp. That's a tough little call. Does the guy behind them pull him down, too? It isn't on Sharp. Well, it looks like it is not on Sharp. I led, you to, I led you down a bad path there. So they do get Washington, and that clearly appeared to be the correct call. Because yeah, the officials started pointing initially down the other way, like they were going to change direction. So one in the end, it's the seventh team foul against the Aggies. And Sharp hits on the front end. Whatever you call there, it can't be on Sharp. <laughs> That's sandwiched in there. 
up for it by getting to the free throw line again. Let's check in with John. Well, guys, Calvin Sanson talks so much about the winning DNA of this program, especially Jamal Shedd. He's one of his favorite players he's ever coached. Think about this for a second, guys. Jamal Shedd, during his career, has only been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Final four is a freshman. Yeah, he beat eight then as a sophomore. And last year, the Sweet 16, five minutes away, Spiro from going four for four. For the emotions of a mother, his mom Lisa. He has had one of the all-time careers for a program that has had some of the titans of the sport walk through their place. Can he lead him, lead this program to the holy grail of college basketball? Oh, passing the up and under, no fight for it. He's got it. Last touch by the Aggies. Just not enough oomph on that ball. Obasaki was in fairly decent position, but he was trying to shoot it on the way down. And hit the lower part of the rim. And they go after it. That's the right call. Texas A&M hasn't been to the Sweet 16 since 2018. It was very pretty at the helm. The time the Cougars. Can they take one step closer to their ultimate dream? But here, West is putting it many times the dribble, and now they say jump, and the possession arrow will keep it here for Houston. That was Garcia making that quick reaction just then as he went down. Once again, he didn't have possession of the ball as he falls down to my eye. It looks like he's still dribbling, and it's loose. There it is underneath him, but Garcia closes it a hurry. And we're going to get a timeout on the floor. Houston will inbound with six seconds to shoot when we come back. Let that drama build a little bit more here in Memphis when the Cougars clinging to an eight-point lead on TNT. For a change left in regulation, let's take a little peek at the Capital One rewarding performance. Well, when you look at the way these perimeter players complement one another, they find each other, sheds a leader. Here's a little action for you on the baseline for Shed at 6 1 going up to finish that one off. Great performance by those three guys so far. The Houston Cougars behind Kelvin Sampson and one seed in the tournament for a second straight year. The only other time that's happened in their history in back to back years. They have to go back to Five Slam and Jamma in 1983. Sweet 16, each of the last four. This juggernaut of the program that they have built. Interestingly, we have not seen a lot of records in the history of the game. But a lot of by Sharp with the shot clock winding down. And he's going to earn a trip to the free throw line. But he knew that he had the six seconds to work with when it was entered to him. And he used every second of it to put the ball on the floor a couple of times. He's more affected by him. 85% free throw shooter. Opening round game, scoreless first half, 13 in the second, and tonight on a similar trajectory, 16 points after halftime. If they make a deep run, this kid is going to be one of the biggest reasons why. And they have needed everything he's given them over the course of the season, Jimmy, with all the injuries. And interesting enough, Spiro, you know, the, the foul trouble that we highlighted at the half. 
There's still a couple of guys, you know, four guys with four. They've all hung around for a long period of time in the second half. Yeah, Texas A&M has to pick it up a little bit. Make sure, though, you don't hurry in four shots. The play play. Match is the biggest lead of the night here. Okay, 16 and 3. They jumped him again, coming back with that spin. Here comes Taylor. Misses everything. Yeah, he was a pitch attack at a bad spot. Hardy should not have shot that. Defense just closes in on you in a hurry, and the help side is there also consistently for Kelvin Sanders. Shane into the corner, shot. It's a 13-point game as we get a whistle at the other end with 3.43 left and the Aggies on the ropes. And here's the help. There's one there. There's a second coming in to help. Now you're stuck. And now watch what happens over here. They fill in again. So now he's going up against two bigger guys. That's the third person on show with 3.43 left. Jennifer Foyley misses at the free throw line. They have had plenty of misses. Total of 14. The Bassett team, not a great free throw shooter, but he hits on both here. An 11 point game. Bassett key is going to sit with Carter in, and that last shot was a big one, wasn't it? Barely got that over. Huge discrepancy in attempted free throws as we saw that last drive. Something else that the Cougars have overcome. So he's going to be an illegal pick, and Francis is done. And watch his right leg there. It's weird to see the, the stick out of the right leg. You got to keep that within the framework of your shoulder. He sticks the right leg out. He's going to go right the other way. See how far out he is? It's supposed to be underneath your shoulder with the whiff. And he extends it. Bradford goes down. It's a good call from the officials. So Javier Francis, first year starter for Kelvin Sampson, has fouled out. Bradford should get over there and help out too with this entry pass. Sampson is going to go small here instead of bringing in Ray. Wilson up front with Rucker, so late for the pass. Small sequence. Real small, not only that, but right. the entry pass. Get it away from it. A one-on-one -on -one situation. Here we go again. Watch this track right here. If they could slow you down, that's where they're looking to get the ball. Good pass down to the middle of the floor by Shed. And we leave it. Right to the safety guy. Three minutes left in Memphis. Which of these two teams? Is hard to Dallas in the Sweet 16. So Calvin Sampson, a lot to think about. He's just lost Francis. One and one here for Taylor. Just hasn't been his night yet. Young man who has just had a magnificent season, especially over the last couple of weeks. And the free throw gives him an opportunity to set up the defense. They're becoming one, two, two. See what they're looking at right now, about the same thing. Two thirty-nine left, Shed will be the inbounder. Watch this, is that a frame right now? We've got to get Washington in this play right here. He's going to kind of help play free safety here to make sure they don't get the middle. Right, almost a steal by Carter. 
Next whistle against the Aggies puts Houston with a double bonus. She had the quick shot from the first. Oh, the defense apart and makes perfect passes. That was assist number eight for him tonight. So Pryor with four, Shed with four. Francis is fouled out. Shoots him left in a three point game. Texas A&M needs a turnover right now, Spiro. against this full court action. Of course, Williams will lead Sir Radford here. As the chess match between these two coaching staffs continue. And we've seen them do two things. We've seen them run somebody in the middle of the floor, and then you can also go down the sideline, too. You have options. Set with 152 left in regulation. Buzz Williams and the Aggies down to their final timeout as they try to play out of a 12 point hole with a date to the Sweet 16 on the line here in Memphis. Radford will be the end of the And Washington sneaks in for the open layup. That's just good of a preview right there. Allows it to set up again. Let's see how they react with this if they can fill up the middle of the floor defensively. Keep in mind, Shed and Pryor playing with four as Garcia is going to reach in to put Wilson at the free throw line. Double bonus for both teams from here on out. Two free throws. Nobody home at all there. Breakdown. Not a bad foul. Still, when you're down 10, you always look better if you're down three possessions and there's about a, you know, Oh, a minute, 10 or more on the clock. It's not a bad idea to start fouling and hope for some misses. Hey, Matt, Matt. the right guy, too. It's 61%. Yeah. Wilson misses on the first. Look at the relationship between these two coaches. They go back 30 years. Got the report from Johnny Patel. Chris Williams, a student manager at Navarro College. Just outside of Dallas. Company is the head coach of Oklahoma. They struck up a relationship and they were stuck in the middle of this game since then. How about that defense? Roberts, Taylor, plays on his. Oh, figure on that one. Here's his shot of the night. It's an eight point game. Buzz Williams upset about something here with 126 left in regulation. I like the way they forced the action. It was a really good block by Roberts. And look at this shot. I think that's going to be a two, right? What they. But his right foot's on the line, Jimmy. Yep. yep. Officials have gone to the replay monitor to look. They're, I think they called it a three, Spiro. I think. They yep. have changed it to a two. So two-point field goal. How about the quick reaction, though, for him to shoot the basketball? 
Finally getting a shot to go for him, but it's been a long night for Taylor. I mean, really long as far as percentage is concerned. Three for 18, one for eight on the three-point line. And now you just go crazy on the defensive side. If you foul, you foul, so be it. Lining up his football right there. That guy's got to come back strong. Set goes in. So they went for the initial steal. This will be against Obasiki. And that is going to be his fourth. Now this football look is designed to start with everybody congested and then get everybody out of the way. And I have already said that if one guard against the defensive guard, if you can't get open, you're probably playing this, the wrong position. So L.J. Cryer, young man who Kelvin Sampson actually recruited out of high school. He grew up in Katy, Texas. Of course, chose Baylor initially, was a freshman on their national championship team. Kelvin didn't get him the first time, but he got him the second time around. What a season this kid put together for the Cougars. Among the most prolific three-point shooters in the country. I'm just going to say the three perimeter guys are pretty good three-point shooters. Tyrese Ranford trying to breathe life into the Aggies. It's a two-point field goal. Another look overhead here. So an eight-point game with 116 remaining. Watch the left foot. Oh boy. The officials have gone to the replay monitor again. Boy, that's close. He made it clear the three-point line. Jimmy, you got the 20 10. What do you think? Uh, I'm thinking that's, you know, when, when a lefty shooter shoots the basketball, his left foot slides up a little bit, as does the right. We just saw that a second ago with Taylor shooting the ball. His hit foot went forward also. Let's bring you Gene's territory. Gene, we'll let you take a swing at this. Yeah, from what I've got right now, Spiro, from what they've ruled on the court, I don't think you can overturn that one and make it a three. You know, we're looking at that front toe naturally, but it appears that it is over top of the, you know, the top of the line. I don't see anything indisputably, you know, in the other direction that would cause me to say you could overturn it. Gee, you may have to get out the old index card for that. <laughs> <laughs> nice call, Spiro. I think Spiro. you're right on that one, Spiro. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, Gene, you know what's interesting, though, too, on the three is that the previous one by Taylor, he missed it by maybe three inches. That one, less than an inch, would have put two more points up on the board for Texas A&M. Really would have made this game interesting. Marcus Pettigrew telling yes, him you're right on that too, Jimmy. They did not have enough to overturn. We thank G for hopping on with us. So two-point field goal for Radford. Taylor jumped him, squeezing him along the sideline. And she turns the corner. I thought he was going for the foul right there. He reaches over. With the assist from the Aggies bench, the officials make the call. Well, quick hitter. He's going to clear. Oh! As sharp is not to the deck. Boy, you talk about getting to a spot and getting a shot off in a hurry. Look where he starts that shot. Two or three strides behind the three-point line. But he knew exactly what he was doing. There's that rotation I've been referencing before. As good as anybody I've seen. Again, double bonus for both teams from here on out. So two free throws coming up for Sharp. Keep in mind the first meeting between these two teams. That furious second half comeback by the Aggies. Down 21, tied it. As we take another look at that little sequence, the contact from Taylor. Kind of interesting, too, because it looked like Sharp started by putting his right arm around him. Watch the right arm. The officials have gone to the replay monitor to determine if there was anything extra from Sharp. Then our crew here, Marcus Pettigrew, Lee Cassell, and Jeff Hartness. Gene, what do you think? 
I, I think you've got a common foul on on uh, Texas A&M on this one, Spiro. I know he's swim moving a little bit sharp, is, but I've got Taylor's right, you know, left arm around that waist, and then when Sharp starts to spin move, you already have a restriction. And Gene, when they go to the monitor right there, they're not looking to make a call right or wrong on that particular play. They're looking for something extra. Yes, most definitely, Jim. You're looking for some type of a hook and hold, a pin restriction, something to that level. And as we've seen on the replay, nothing rises to the level for that. So we go with the common foul. Yep. Thanks, Gene. All right, so Emmanuel Sharp, 24 points, 6 of 12 from 3. See what he's done at the free throw line. This young man has not played a bigger game in his life when you consider the stakes. And a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line here in Memphis. Remember he's the one who hit that big three late in the first meeting between these two teams in Houston. And Sharp, a new career high with 26. They gotta go quicker than this right here. Taylor trying to fend it. Prior throws and he's fouled. Wow. Behind the line, too. Unbelievable. There's still 55 seconds left. It seems like the clock hasn't really moved much. You know he's going to go up and pull up with a shot. And LJ Cryer, Jimmy, has fouled out for Houston. What a potential swing this is. Clearly got him across the right arm. So if you're Taylor, if you can hit three here, this potentially a four-point game with 55 seconds and now no more Cryer for the rest of the night. You know, when you take Cryer off the floor with his 88% three-point shooting, he's another catch and foul type guy. That's because he has that rotation on the ball. He gets some friendly bounces, this young man, with the way he shoots. Trying to will his Aggies back to his hometown. And the Sweet 16, if he can somehow bring them back. The Aggies just have to continue to do what they've been doing. Trying for a quick deal. And then put Houston to the free throw line. And Houston's job is to make free throws. He can run the baseline right now. They've got a team inbound to Sharp and they get him. Just a couple of seconds come off the clock. 52.9. Yeah, they're well-coached teams. He did, they get the double over here, they watch the arm. They're in a good spot. That's a nice back reverse pivot just then to get some separation there, because he wasn't going to be able to get that back to Shea. And now Obasaki has fouled out for Texas A&M. That's a huge loss for the Aggies. One of the biggest reasons why they've gotten to this point. A magnificent run that he's been on over the past couple of weeks. Let's see how Buzz Williams replaces Obasaki here for the final 52.9. This has been a crazy 45 seconds, hasn't it been? This was a 13-point yeah. Houston lead. You thought maybe it was over. But surprise, surprise, this... Gritty team coached by Buzz Williams trying to fight their way back. Look at the foul legend now for both teams. Multiple starters for Houston. Oh, that's a key gun and Sharp has 27 points. And they're 80% from the free throw line in Texas A&M. 25 to 39 to 64%. Those are all over. Can't bear to watch. It's a one-possession game. Inbound to Sharp, and they're going to get a timeout here on Shed. Last of us, a, a double team on the right in that corner over there. A little up and under and too much, but look at the cleanup action. They know how to offensive rebound, that's for sure. They have 21 of them tonight. There's your game reset, 42.1 seconds left. Double bonus for both teams, one timeout left apiece. 
LJ Cryer has fouled out for Houston. Huge loss for Calvin Sampson and his staff. It's a battle of attrition at this point. So they got a fresh, most of the time out, they get the 10 seconds to get the ball out. If I'm one of the play, Texas A&M players, Spiro, real fast, I'm telling the officials, we're going in for a double team, but we're going in because we have the possession arrow. We're going in for the, the double team, I mean, the, uh, the jump ball type of situation, the tie-up. So I'm, not, I'm telling them that just because I don't want to give up a quick foul. A 13 point Houston lead is down to three. And now the Yankees drop down. It's a one possession game here in Memphis. A tough decision to make, too, if you're both Williams here. Jamal said the player of the year in the Big 12. Holding a win. He's going to do this here. here well defended tough shot again and they go to work on the glass another opportunity there just a little too long by Radford he seems confident it's Texas A&M ball but he doesn't have to whistle officials once again going to the replay monitor who touched it last is that number 11 is that Dunn who got his left hand on it Let's bring in Gene's territory again. Gene, how do you see this? I've got it off done. I've got AM ball and I've got 10.1 on the game clock, fellas. Good call on the extra uh, second there, too, Gene, because they got 9.6 up on the clock. Here's the tip, and that clock should stop once, once that ball hits the out of bounds. It hits the floor out of bounds. Looks like the officials will confirm it will be Texas AM basketball. 10.1 on the game clock. Keep in mind, Spiro, that Kelvin Sampson, when he's up three points, he doesn't like the foul in these situations. He likes to play it out. Here's the ball going down, and 10-1's a good call. So he doesn't like the foul in these situations, is what he, he mentioned to us. So he, and I don't blame him for believing in this defense, especially with the way Texas A&M re rebounds if they go to the line for a second opportunity. Unless Buzz is getting out here on the court to play, <laughs> which I don't think he is, to call the timeout. So Buzz look, Williams. Yeah. So look for the three on this one with the screens. And remember, this guy right here has struggled all night long, but they set a double screen for him to finally try to trigger him. And Ten yes. seconds left. This is where dreams are made. There he is. Look. He went to the left corner. The throws in. Taylor got a couple of them. I wouldn't say they're good looks because they were guarding the perimeter, but Kelvin Sampson doesn't foul when you're up when he's up three points and he lived up to the strategy that he maintains. Texas AM. Here's Taylor, keep in mind.
catch it, bring it up. And I'll let them tell the rest. Gallus in the Sweet 16, hanging in the balance on TNT. March Madness Magic here in Memphis. Look at the run by the Aggies to close a frantic comeback. And AM back from the dead as we enter overtime. I mean, I looked up at one point, I said there was 58 seconds left. It just seemed like it would go on forever and ever. And Jimmy, keep in mind, LJ Pryor and Francis have fouled out for the Houston. Two huge pieces, certainly Pryor. Fouls on personnel now. This is Taylor, bottled up in the corner, picks it up. There's the foul trouble. That's going to be interesting. Taylor just gave that ball, and I think he's going to try to at least win this team to a win here. And so is this guy with the basketball shot. Dallas. 
just got four. The key is not to try to do too much with your tail and try to make up for a bad fourth of 20 tonight. Fine line between trying to get aggressive and some of the decision making down the stretch. 234 left. This guy knows what to do with the ball. You just know that you can put the ball in Shed's hand. Watch him here, and then watch the timing of this cut. They get everybody to roll. That's the kind of defense that Texas A&M likes to play, right? They like to put somebody in the middle of the floor defensively, and he just chews it up on the fly. A critical miss by Radford. Texas A&M has been outscored in overtime 7-1 with 2.19 left here in Memphis. And if the Aggies lose this game, it'll be the free throw shooting, Jimmy, that they talk about. 26 of 42. Just a little over a 62% play. He's going to get the assignment. It looks like Lance is going to continue to get the assignment. Remember, he's 6 7. I think set the lead for his mind that he can go by him when the opportunity arises. Now it's switched up. And now we're back into it. Look at this. Look at Washington flying right in his face. Washington's going to take his turn on Shed. Five to shoot. Shed elevates, misses. We've got Radford. And we don't have to race here. Radford doing his dance, wants to take down. Runs in and lays it up and in for the Yankees. The hesitation will score on that side, but I said you don't have to hurry at that point. He kind of settled down for a second and then blasted it into second gear. Such a smart play on his part. And the lefty once again. Going left. Radford's got 27. And it's a one score game again. Shredder gets a point guard. He's a little taller than that. Game on the watch. Too much. Look how it is. It's Radford. He's on the board by three games. What a big time rebound. 63 seconds. <laughs> of Shed here. He understands the shot clock. When this ball's in the air, just take a look. He's waiting, waiting, and now all of a sudden, watch the big hop. He gets the ball in the air, and boom, finishes it off. Now we're back to end of regulation right here, Spiro. 25-point win, Wade Taylor, 5 for 25, he's 3 for 14 for deep. Here comes Shed, they've got a foul, quickly Garcia gets to him. With 21.5 left. And they tried to foul in the backcourt. Lost a couple of seconds there in that exchange. Mm. Sharp has fouled out. Pryor has fouled out. Texas A&M came back from the dead to tie it, send this game to overtime. But boy, they're going to need another miracle here. With Shed trying to turn out the lights at the free throw line. Oh. Maybe a little tired. I hate to say it because he's so well conditioned, but playing a lot of minutes in an intense game. He has not come off the floor tonight. And he'll regroup right here. I would be surprised if this shot doesn't clear the front rim. He's 
He's led this team to 31 wins this year. Can he get that one more? One for two, five point game. And now Kelvin Sampson's going to take a timeout. And everyone's going to catch their breath. Final seconds in Memphis. Jamal Shedd trying to will his Cougars over the finish line and on to Dallas. There's your game reset, 21.5 left in overtime. Kelvin has taken his final timeout. Buzz Williams has one left. Texas A&M with an incredible 13-3 run at the end of regulation to send this to overtime. Buzz Williams trying to get the Aggies back to the Sweet 16. They have they run out of time here against the big mighty Cougars from Houston. I don't think they give up a layup that easily, so we're going to see what the decision is. They get him from the back. Some teams, Spiro, give up that layup pretty easily. But did you see how they closed after the foul? You knew they weren't going to give up an easy one and just settle with a three point lead. Watch them from behind here. I think it's, is it Shed who reaches in first? It is indeed yeah. Shed, and he is fouled out with 18.2 seconds left. And Houston holding a five point lead. And he did that in three seconds, by the way. He pushed that ball up the floor. And that's a push. You see the hand on the hip? You're guiding him away from the basket, even though it's a clean block from behind. The foul occurs before that block. This makes it interesting. Yeah, Shed, huh? That adds to the intrigue here. So Shed joins Cryer and Sharp on the bench, and now Ryan Elvin, Little U senior, fourth year walk-on, is going to check into the game. How about this spot for that young kid uh, with 18.2 left? Here's Taylor at the line. Can make it. And then you have your choice where you want to set this ball. Now sometimes you say, well, let's direct it to somebody here and there, but right now, if, you, if you're the Houston team, you're doing your best just to get this ball in bounds. Dunn is a 69% free throw shooter. Walker hasn't played enough to really have a statistical number that matters. Let's see who's going to try to get it. Rich Bull really squeezed in tight. And to Elvin, and he's going to shoot free throws. If we're going to put a guy at the line, boy, is this a guy who's been sitting cold on the bench all night? Look at them. I love the way they're going up to him, kind of just, you know. Pretty much saying, just try to put one of these in. Boy, if this moment doesn't typify this tournament, I don't know what does. As Solomon Washington, by the way, has fouled out now for the Aggies. They just get, try to get him to relax. Ryan Elvin, who has taken four free throws all season is going to make that slow and lonely walk to the line in a one-score game with 17 seconds left in the biggest moment of his basketball life. He's appeared in 19 games. And it's still a one-possession game. All right, it wasn't a bad shot for a miss. At least it was long, Spiro, right? A lot of times, you come in situations like that, you come up short. So the fact that he went wrong, this should be on to a little bit more. Going back in. Four-point game. Keep in mind, Shen has just found out. They're rolling it in the right game. Here we go. Here comes the Yankee star, and Buzz Williams takes a timeout. On the run, he's going towards the basket. I think it might have held off on that one, but he's the coach. And now both teams are out of timeouts. Every time we have thought that the Aggies were done, they have fought back. This was the end of regulation.
Anderson Garcia breathing life into AM and sending the game to overtime. And a wild finish to regulation. So, Jimmy, now no timeouts, four point game. Once again, take us into that huddle and what you're thinking of your Buzz Williams. I think you're, you're taking the best best option you can. You're going to have guys going to the three-point line. You're also going to have guys slipping to the basket. Who's ever open, you take that shot first because you want to score, hopefully, with 10 seconds on the clock and redo what we just saw a second ago and try to foul somebody. So four of Kelvin Sampson's five starters have fouled out, including Jamal Shedd here in overtime. Spiro, my thought process is if I could get a quick hitter to the two, I know this game is, revolves around the three. With the guys who are not on the floor for Houston, their free throw shooters really aren't on the floor right now. I might just very well take the quick two and try to get them back to the line and hopefully get one more chance with six seconds on the clock or thereabouts. Jace Carter will be the inbounder, 13.6. That's the only thing, when you miss that shot, the percentages really go out the window pretty quickly. I think I'm more tempted to drive that right there where he's going to his left and keep pushing his head down and you'll get a call from the officials. So Malik Wilson now to the free throw line. The double transfer. Last team to win after four players fouled out. Let's go all the way back to 1987 and Utah. So still, that's why you take the two. Now you have a 99-97 game if you could get the two. I'm not saying you would have gotten the two that easily, but now it gives you eight seconds, eight and nine to come down. I think you missed your time as a coach. <laughs> Wilson hits on the second. Five-point game, 8.9 seconds left. Remember, they're out of timeouts here. Radford, the inbounder. Here comes Taylor. Right here from the corner, the three. Hefner, no. Taylor, lost it. It's over. The Houston Cougars survive and advance in a March Madness Thriller here in Memphis. We expected a war between these two teams, and that's exactly what we got. As the Houston Cougars are headed to Dallas, and a sweet 16 date with Duke. Hey, you wanted him, bro. You wanted him, baby. I got the dog. And what a matchup that is going to be on Friday in Dallas as the Cougars get everything they want from Buzz Williams and his AM Aggies. Again, the raw motions of this tournament. There's nothing like it in sports. Proud parents, the families. Wow. In the meantime, the finality of what this moment represents for those players on that Texas A&M team. And a happy Cougar alum. <laughs> Boy, did that ever deliver. Just can't say enough about Buzz Williams' group, Jimmy. Just they look dead in the water, and somehow they pull themselves back from the fire and gave themselves a chance. John Rothstein standing by with Kelvin and the winning Cougars. Kelvin, that was a prize fight. How did you come out on top? You know, in the, the last two minutes was Murphy's Law. You know, we, we, we kept missing some free throws. The ball was bounced all over the place. They didn't miss a three, and they didn't make an easy one. They were all hard threes. Somebody said, well, how did they come back? We missed some free throws. 
they kept fighting for rebounds, kicking them out, making threes. Talk about also the resiliency of your team when you look at this whole unit so connected down the stretch. Well, when we got to the uh, huddle uh, to start this uh, uh, overtime, I said, we've been here before, Baylor. Because yeah. we're a big in the Baylor game. They came back, <clears throat> tied it, we go to overtime. And, and against all odds on the road against a really good Baker, Baylor team, great fans, we find a way to win. Same thing today. But I think when you have a culture that's built on um, togetherness and work, playing together was not good enough tonight, uh, John. We had to play for each other because we're shorthanded. You know, we, we, won, we finished that game with just kids that wanted to help the University of Houston win. Uh, in all my years, I'm probably more proud of this one than any of them. All right, congratulations. Let's bring in Jamal Shedd right here. Jamal, have you ever been a part of a game like this? Man, um, I would I would say I have, but nothing like this environment. Why does this team have so much resiliency from top to bottom? Your walk on made a huge free throw late, Ryan Elvin. That's just the work, the work that we put in day in, day out. And uh, this this patch right here, man, um, Coach. Coach uh, during halftime was talking about, you know, it's going to be a war and uh, it's going to hurt. And uh, what would 32 do? Um, Reggie Cheney would have fought his ass off in a game like this. So uh, we were built for this. And um, I just missed my dog and uh, on to the Sweet 16. You're going home to Texas to play Duke. Your thoughts on the Blue Devils? Uh, we'll, we'll see when we get when we get some film on them. Right now, I'm going to enjoy the win. Try to go get some rest. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Spiro. March Madness, it's the theater of dreams, and the Cougars dream season will continue to Dallas. Yes, we heard Jamal Shedd acknowledging Reggie Cheney and the outpouring of emotions for a Houston team that's got a weight of the world on their shoulders, all the expectations as they survive. What a crazy finish here in Memphis. Unbelievable. Kelvin trying to take this program to the promised land, and they are moving on to Dallas. Well, I'm still shaking my head after that one, Spiro. That was a fabulous, fabulous basketball game to watch. Special thanks to our incredible crew, Craig Silver, Andy Friedman, Jason Melnick, Scott Martin, Brooke Weiss, Jasper Jones, Tom Borstein, for our entire TNT crew. Spiro Dina saying so long from Memphis. You've been watching the NCAA Basketball Championship.